Chapter 15 Death and Immortality In this chapter, Hermes explores the nature of death and the fate of the soul which survives it. From mankind's perspective, time is a destroyer. Through the process of time, we age and die. From a cosmic perspective, time is an endlessly repeating cycle measured by the constant revolutions of the stars. Whilst the things of the earth are always changing, the orbits of the stars always remain the same. Hermes asks, could something as impermanent and transitory as our earthly existence be regarded as anything other than an illusion? Yet this illusion arises from an underlying permanent reality. The discovery of the permanent within the impermanent is the reward of the spiritual quest. Hermes teaches that we must accept the inevitable transitory nature of all physical things. Everything is in a process of being born and then dying. The old must pass away so that the new can come into existence. New shoots are born from the decaying remains of old vegetation, and these new shoots will in turn eventually decay and die. He teaches, however, that a human birth is not the beginning of the soul, only of its incarnation as that particular person. Death is simply the end of this particular person and the soul's transformation into another state. Death is just the discarding of a worn out body. Most people are ignorant of this fact and therefore needlessly fear death. After leaving the body at death, the individual soul is judged by the chief of the gods to see if it is pure and honorable. Pure souls are assigned to a heavenly realm. Ignorant souls fall once again into the material realms and are reincarnated. A soul which during its earthly life has come to know God will have become all mind. When it leaves the body, it takes on a body of light and is freed from all limitations. Such an enlightened soul has recognized that its essential nature is godlike, and on death it communes with God. It has run the race of purity and is now completely spiritual and divine. Such a soul has become a God. Death and Immortality The end of becoming is the beginning of destruction. The end of destruction is the beginning of becoming. Everything on earth must be destroyed, for without destruction, nothing can be created. The new comes out of the old. Every birth of living flesh, like every growth of crop from seed, will be followed by destruction. But from decay comes renewal through the circling course of the celestial gods and the power of nature who has her being in the being of Atom. For man, time is a destroyer, but for the cosmos, it is an ever-turning wheel. These earthly forms that come and go are illusions. How can something be real, which never stays the same? But these transitory illusory things arise from the underlying permanent reality. Birth is not the beginning of life, only of an individual's awareness. Change into another state is not death, only the ending of this awareness. Most people are ignorant of the truth and therefore afraid of death, believing it to be the greatest of all evils but death is only the dissolution of a worn out body. Our term of service as guardians of the world is ended when we are freed from the bonds of this mortal frame and restored, cleansed and purified to the primal condition of our higher nature.
to quitting the body, mind, which is divine by nature, is freed from all containment, taking on a body of light, it ranges through all space, leaving the soul to be judged and punished according to its deserts. Souls do not all go to the same place, nor to different places at random. Rather, each is allocated to a place that fits its nature. When a soul leaves the body, it undergoes a trial and investigation by the chief of the gods. When he finds a soul to be honorable and pure, he allows it to live in a region that corresponds to its characteristics. But if he finds it stained with incurable ignorance, he hurls it down to the storms and whirlwinds where it is eternally tossed between sky and earth on the billowing air. Only a good soul is spiritual and divine, having wronged no one and come to no atom. Such a soul has run the race of purity and becomes all mind. After it leaves its physical form, it becomes a spirit in a body of light so that it may serve atom. At the dissolution of the body, first the physical form is transformed and is no longer visible. The vital spirit returns to the atmosphere. The bodily senses go back to the universe and recombine in new ways to do other work. Then the soul mounts upwards through the structures of the heavens. In the first zone, it is relieved of growth and decay. In the second, evil and cunning. In the third, lust and deceiving desire. In the fourth, domineering arrogance. In the fifth, unbalanced audacity and rashness. In the sixth, greed for wealth. In the seventh, deceit and falsehood. Having been stripped of all that was put upon it by the structures of the heavens, the soul now possesses its own proper power and may ascend to the eighth sphere, rejoicing with all those that welcome it and singing psalms to the Father. The gods that dwell above the eighth sphere sing praises with a voice that is theirs alone, call each soul to surrender to the gods, and so each one becomes itself a god by entering communion with Atom. This is primal goodness. This is the consummation of true knowledge. Having been initiated into immortality, a human soul, now transformed into a god, joins the gods who dance and sing in celebration of the glorious victory of the soul. 